Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be repotting my beautiful philodendron mame as well as talking about how I grew it into this large plant. Now I believe this variety is the silver cloud and it can be quite difficult to differentiate between this variety as well as the regular mame. Now some of the things that I've read online is that the silver cloud has a more round shaped leaf as well as a green ruffle petiole. The regular variety has more of a, uh, an elongated or narrow leaf and it has kind of a red maroonish tinged petiole so it can be a little bit difficult to tell uh, the difference between the two. Basically the care is the same for all of them so let's check it out. This plant's about two years old now and when I first got it I really struggled with it. It was actually two, I had two separate plants. Anytime a new leaf would unfurl it would always come out damaged and deformed. It was actually in a video of uh, plants that aren't doing well for me so um, it just kind of corrected itself. It uh, smartened up a little bit and now it's getting these large beautiful leaves and I actually think it's still in the original pot like this thing is comically small like it's just a four inch little pot so it's definitely time to give it something a little bit more appropriate and larger and yeah uh, give it room to grow if you haven't already noticed this is what's called a crawling philodendron so instead of growing up uh, a vertical support or up a tree or something like that uh, this plant grows naturally um, horizontally on the forest floor so there are many different varieties this just happens to be one of them and if you don't have a lot of uh, space or a lot of room for it to grow and expand um, then this plant probably isn't for you but uh, yeah this is what's known as a terrestrial or a, uh, a crawling or creeping philodendron you can train them to grow upright but ultimately um, in time they're going to want to crawl I did have a philodendron SP Columbia that it looked like it was going to be growing vertical for a while and then all of a sudden it just kind of shot out horizontally and it is now in a uh, kind of like a creeping type pot. There's a couple different styles of pots that you can buy. This is a rectangular terracotta pot. Uh, here is the brand name. It is an Italian made pot. It is super thick. It is, yeah, it's a quality terracotta pot. And I do have another uh, crawling philodendron. This is the Summer Glory. It is in the rectangular pot here as well and this is how they grow. Just uh, kind of creeps along in the pot there and it uh, eventually starts to put out uh, larger leaves. So this is a beautiful variety. And this is the pot that I'll be uh, planting the mama in, but there's a, a, a larger pot as well and it's a self-watering pot. This one has a plastic insert and then it has a little gauge telling you how much water is in the bottom. So you can take this out, you can do maintenance, all that kind of stuff. This is my SP Columbia, the one that was growing vertically and then uh, just kind of shot off to the side. It's now getting a new leaf here as well. This one is absolutely gorgeous. It's sizing up quite a bit. And here is the other mommy, uh, the, um, the second one that I had. I just placed it in this pot here as well. So there's uh, two plants in one pot and I do have them kind of growing uh, one from each side. So this uh, SP Silver or Columbia is growing this way. Here's the beautiful leaf. And then the uh, Mame is growing the other side. So they are kind of colliding here. I just uh, use this as a little bit of an experiment pot just to see how they grow together and just uh, so I can utilize more space. This pot I did buy on Amazon. There's a few different varieties out there. And the terracotta one I actually bought from Canadian Tire for pretty cheap. I think it was like $12.99. I'm just gonna quickly run through the very basic care for this plant before I repot them. Uh, this one here is the regular Mame. Here is the Silver Cloud. And the care is pretty much the same for all of these. For light, the Silver Cloud is just off to the side of my plant workshop table here. And it's getting light from my Soltec Highland track system. I like to use a digital light meter to test out the light that my plants are getting. I'm using the foot candles and you can see it's around 200 foot candles and as you get a little bit closer it looks like it's creeping up on the 300 so this is pretty well uh, the high end of low light and that's what these plants need if you think about how they grow in their natural habitat on the forest floor under the canopy of trees they're probably not going to be getting much uh, bright light or very minimal light throughout the day so this is uh, definitely more of a low light plant compared to some other philodendrons for watering, I typically don't let these get as dry as some of my other philodendrons. Once I notice the soil is dry or it needs water, then I'll just give it a good soaking. So I know with this one in particular, if it's extremely dry, the uh, the leaves will just basically flop right over. So uh, give it a good thorough watering and they tend to perk up uh, pretty quickly. But uh, overall, they're not really a fussy plant. Um, yeah, just water when it's dry. For soil, you just want something uh, nice and airy, so something with a lot of uh, bark, perlite, 
Uh, there's some, even some Lekka in there. So uh, it doesn't have to be fancy, but what I've been using lately is a Very Plants Aeroid Mix. I pretty much use that for all of my house plants and they do absolutely wonderful in that mixture. Now for humidity, uh, right now it's 55%, it's 23 degrees in my, in my house here. This is my basement. So uh, just regular house humidity. Between that 30 to 50 range is okay. If it's uh, anything higher, I'm sure it would appreciate it. But overall, uh, just regular house conditions is fine. Now in terms of pests, these plants are pretty much spider mite magnets. So they are prone to spider mites. So I typically just, anytime my plant needs to be watered, I take it over to my bathroom and I do have a little garden hose in my basement here. So I just spray off the leaves, making sure that I I get the back as well as the front. Sometimes you'll see like yellowing along the edges, like right here, this is probably spider mite damage. So you can treat with uh, like a systemic or an insecticidal soap, uh, just spray off the leaves and it'll probably take a couple different treatments. You can also use beneficial insects uh, to get rid of mites and thrips and all that kind of stuff. But um, spider mites is pretty much the one that you have to worry about. Just like with any other philodendron, this is extremely easy to propagate. You can basically slice up the stem, take that top portion, put it in a container of water and it'll grow roots. There's two other methods of propagating this plant that are very unique to this style of uh, crawling or creeping philodendron. So I just prepared the little setup here, but because it is a creeping or crawling plant, you can just set up another pot right beside it, fill it up with some soil, and then if you have the room for it, you can just let it kind of creep in the soil and it'll root itself in the new pot. And then once it is established in this pot, then you can simply just take a, uh, a clean set of pruning shears or a utility knife and just cut that stem off and you'll have two separate plants. You will get a, a new growth point um, once you make the cut here, it'll activate a new growth point and you can see right here, this is the growing eye. So as long as you have the space, this is a really good effective way of, I guess, propagating this plant uh, as it just continues to grow into the new pot. The second method I did on this Gloriosum, um, this plant has always done really poorly for me until I put it in lower light and it, now it's getting these kind of darker velvety leaves. Uh, but I did have uh, two different varieties in this pot. And what I did as a little experiment is I actually cut the stem. So this has been cut for a number of months. Um, yeah, this piece right here is one long section and it actually sprouted from that growing eye and put out that beautiful leaf. Um, the, la the latest leaf looks like it was attacked by thrips. Uh, you can see some, yeah, right there. That is thrip damage for sure, if it'll focus. Um, all those kind of silvery lines, that is thrip damage. So, and then it only produced half a leaf. So I'm not too sure why that happened, but this, this portion of the stem, I can take out of the pot and then this section right here is completely separate. It is rooted and it is also getting a new uh, growth point from the caterpillar there. So this uh, is a completely separate plant and same with, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see, but I chopped this one up in a few spots as well. So you can see I made the cut there. It pushed out this growth point. I'm getting another uh, new leaf down here as well. So you can keep it in the pot and then just slice each node up and that will produce uh, an entirely new plant. That is a very simple way to propagate these plants, especially when, uh, when they're in the pot. Oh, look, we got a little visitor, <laughs> little ladybug. So as a way to deal with thrips, I've been putting ladybugs in some of my house plants. Now ladybugs, uh, they primarily eat aphids, but if they don't find aphids, they'll pretty much eat any soft bodied insects. So I just bring a few inside kind of as a natural predator to thrips and spider mites and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, they're pretty cool. Now I'm gonna take this plant out of the pot, but I'm really curious to see what the root system looks like after two years of being in this small little pot. So I just have the uh, butt end or the handle end of a uh, spoon here. So I'm just going to try and remove it from the pot here. So I just pull up lightly and I just, I'm going around the edge of the pot. Ooh, I can feel roots. I don't think there's anything coming out the bottom. Minimal roots out the bottom. So I'm just gonna gently pull up on the on the soil, there we go. Okay. Yep. Super healthy roots. And it's time for a repot. So now all I'm gonna do is take this pot, 
and then simply place this plant in this pot like that. And then I'm just going to fill in the soil just in the gaps here. So I'm going to keep it at the same height and just let it continue to grow. So all, it, all you have to do is fill in the little gap here in the pot, super easy. I'm just gonna put a little bit of soil in the bottom here just so these roots aren't sitting just straight on terracotta. And this is the soil that I use, like I said, for pretty much all my house plants now. This is the Molly's Aeroid Mix. It comes pre-mixed with a bunch of different uh, ingredients or amendments. This is a soilless mixture and it's just super well draining. It's uh, very airy, so. Um, I do have a discount code in the description of this video if you're interested in trying this soil out. Um, so now all I have to do is just fill in the gaps or the area around the plant. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a base layer there. I'm going to take this intact and then just put it right in the pot like that. I will never bury the stem. I will always just keep it on like on top of the soil. Now sometimes it can get a little bit floppy before it establishes a root system. So what I've done in the past is I've just placed a wooden stake in there. I've packed it down around the uh, the wood stake and then I've just secured the plant to uh, to the wood stake just to provide some uh, upright support so it doesn't flop over. Once it's fully rooted, you can take the support stake out and it should remain upright. So that is pretty simple. And then all you have to do is just fill in the soil. And obviously you wanna have this end closer, uh, kind of butt up against the end of the pot and then as it grows, it's going to fill in the rest. So I like this pot simply because it's a smaller size. So I don't have a ton of space uh, downstairs here and this one's gonna be remaining on my plant workshop table here. So I didn't want that uh, self watering pot. It's uh, probably twice as long as this. Okay, so I pretty much put in all the soil. Now you can pack it down with a pencil or whatever you have just to, I'm gonna pack it around at the, where the uh, original soil was. So I'm just gonna kind of cover that up a little bit. You can see it's pretty stable and I've added soil uh, directly under. So I kind of lift this up a little bit and then I just pushed the soil underneath. So um, it might grow under the soil naturally, but um, do not place it or do not plant it uh, under the soil. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for this right now. Uh, it'll do its own thing if it decides to grow underneath. Um, yeah, it'll grow over top of things. As you've seen, it'll grow over the top of the uh, edge of the pot there. So that's pretty much all I'm gonna do for it. I gave it water yesterday, so I'm not gonna give it any water today. It's probably gonna dry out really quick though because this is a new terracotta and it's gonna soak that moisture really quick. Plus this is dry soil. So I'll probably have to water it in maybe like two or three days. So I'll have to pay attention to that. I should also mention the only thing I don't like about this planter is it doesn't have a rectangular um, saucer. So I did have to find, or I did find these little plastic trays uh, at Canadian Tire as well. It's one of those stores that just has everything. Um, and it does fit into the tray nicely without taking up a ton of space. So this is where it's gonna go. I'm going to uh, place all the plants back in their spots here and then I'll show you what it looks like. All the plants are back in their spots and you can see just how limited I am for space now. This I had uh, brought in into my basement here as a plant workshop table as an area I could do repotting. But as you can see, everything's just quickly grown in. So I have a number of other plants here as well, but uh, the Summer Glory, here's the Mommy uh, right off to the side. So. Yeah, this is what the area looks like. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching my videos. Take care everyone, bye.